been in Nambria, that we are here. Uh, this association has been in place since uh, 2013. It has grown from a membership of 25 to 200. And when I talk about membership, those are organizations or companies mm. that handle externalization of labor. We do not externalize labor ourselves, but we facilitate the company that we go, especially those that are our members. So when you're speaking to us, you're not speaking to the 200. You're speaking to us as uh, workers, mm. as facilitators, right? looking for a side hustle, looking for better pay, maybe even a better job. Mm. So just bear that in mind. For a while, we've been asking ourselves if there is our uh, view. How do we get to get people to speak to us? Uh, <coughs> not someone like Ham, but someone who is more of our age group. Yeah. And especially when I read your book, I was touched by how you made your first. Thank you. Maybe or maybe. Yeah. And I thought this is a person we need to talk to. As you see, we are all uh, office based persons, 8 to 5 job, which sometimes is 6 to 10. Yeah. Um, the rat race at its best. And uh, I think we've been here for a couple of months. We've come and go. Yeah. So you do know the challenges that are uh, and the case in the world of work. We're very really pleased to have you here. Thank yeah. you for agreeing to, to visit with us. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Brian Kayongo. I'm so excited to be here. It's a great opportunity and I'm blessed. I thank God for his grace to have us here today and to meet wonderful people like you. One thing which I want to say first is that all of us as we are here today, we are blessed with one thing, is knowledge. It's like a car when it's parked and it has been packed for so long, and you want to jumpstart it. That's what every one of us need every morning, every day, every night. It might be you want to jumpstart the relationship you have with your kids. You want to just jumpstart the relationship you have with your employer, your employees, in any capacity you are in. So today I'm so blessed to be here, at least to be the battery I bought to jumpstart. I may jumpstart anything in your life. <laughs> so I'm so blessed for, for that and for God for giving me that opportunity to share what I've learned with my lifetime experience. Uh, I've lived in Uganda uh, for so many years. I was here until when I was 19, then I traveled to the United States. But before then, I was so blessed to see the life in Kampala, how it moves and how people here in this country are so great entrepreneurs, but they just need structures and they need the right partners I, I will share one story i was telling one of my friends when i go to stand big bank i'm not like any other individual not that i have so much money on the bank account but the one thing which makes me different is that some of you here you have your kids at home but when was the first time have you ever taken your kid to the bank uh, is anyone has ever taken their kid to the bank if they have kids? <laughs> okay. So, uh, one thing which I wanted to share is that I remember when I was a kid, my dad took me to the bank. From the day when I, I could understand, okay, walk, I got to know the bank teller. I got to know the branch manager. Every time when he was collecting salary, I went with him. But I didn't understand the logic behind that. The logic behind that was to create a relationship for me. The person who was the branch manager now would be the CEO of the bank by the time I'm 25 or 20. So in life, the first exposure you need to provide to anyone in life is the connection and relationships. Indirectly, we block our opportunities or indirectly will block other people's opportunities. In which way? Just refusing them to get a simple <coughs> exposure of just coming to the bank. Like for example, you may have a kid, but the kid has never even go to this office to know, oh, what does dad or mom do? Because they might be needing to just see it from you and they continue impacting the world even better than the way you have impacted. If today I walk into any stand big bank or any bank, I've met most of the people who were like tailors by then, now they are branch managers. Those who are branch managers, now they are big people in better positions. So 
let us take the opportunity to share our connection and our relationship to others who are younger than us. And that will be the bridge for us for the better future. Especially Uganda is ranked one of the most enterprising country. One of the things as people in this kind of setup, the professional way, we do what we call the nine to five. In America, we call it the nine to five. What do we do after 5 p.m.? Do we go to traffic and drive back home? Do we go to do some shopping? Your future is not built under 9 to 5. Your future is built after 5. What thing you do after 5 to this place, it interconnects you to your future. Are you just going to sit in traffic and wait and drive home? Or are you going to go downstairs and network with the right people in this building? Because there is a social connection in this building. There is a big network. Even if you want to build a big financial network in this building and build it. So many people in this building have so many great ideas. Like for example, if you are hired here, you need to build this to be more stronger and more connected and more powerful so that you continue eating from here. But if you don't build this thing to be more stronger, more powerful, tomorrow you're not going to have the job to stay here. But so many times of some of us will come and work in an organization and we are like, okay, when am I going to do my next thing? But you forgetting your next thing, it's in the same area, the same position, the same place you are in, but you just have to build it better and strengthening it. The main thing which has helped me in life to grow, to build your second passive income. But your second passive income is built starting from you building a network. Because everyone here, I've met you, all of you today, you hold my capital. So every individual you meet, you meet let me say you have been with a certain group of people and your life has not been changed. You need to challenge yourself to meet a lot of new strangers. Because there is a saying which says strangers have your capital. Strangers have your next vision. The less strangers you meet, the less you're going to be more exposed. When we have our kids, we tell them, Hey, I want to join a best and better, sir. That's the saying. It's one. But then you never know your kid might be your gateway. Because I may meet this gentleman and I'm with my son. And my son might... This gentleman will be like warmed up with my son saying, hello, hello. Then it's my opportunity now for me to ask this gentleman, how are you doing, sir? To get to know about him. But if I was not with my kid, that would, that would not even another way come. If I was saying, my kids, when you see people who are out, don't talk to anyone. So many things in our lives are interconnected, starting from family. And for me in life, what has helped me to get where I'm at first is God moving to the biblical principles of life as the Jews do. Uh, just to touch a bit of that, we look at the world like most of the powerful people, why they are so successful from us and why they are so successful from anyone else is that they practice so much of the Jewish principles of giving. All of us will have something to give. In any capacity you are in, today, who have you given? It's not giving like in cash, it's all in like in assets. But you give back to make an impact of putting a smile on someone's face. Something in you continues building because when you start with that, the other things are going to be so easy for you to give. And you give what you want. Because you may give your one hour time to someone and that message you have given them, oh, that advice you've given them to change generations to generations. And the more you give, because always, if you're a receiver, your plate starts dropping off things. Even the important ones start getting off. But you need to keep. So that's one of the things I also want to, uh, to share with you. Another thing which I want to share with you is that loving ourselves. You know, in life, we want to achieve, get, 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 get. But we forget one part of life. 
is loving ourselves. When you get to understand you as an individual, it will be easily to define your future and your vision and your mission in life. And the moment you understand that, that will interconnect so easily with everyone you meet here every day, whoever comes here to, to be helped. Because you will be having a strong ambition of being in this setting because no one will distract you off from your vision. Because the moment you came and said, okay, I'm going to work with this company, or I'm going to work with this organization, were your vision aligned with the mission of the company? And the moment those are aligned together, it's going to be so easy for you to see growth. Another thing which I will share, I would love to share about my story as a person, because I know, given some of the opinions, but I'm so blessed to grow up in Uganda. Uganda is a land of opportunities. And the one thing which I've learned in Uganda is the small things multiply faster than the big things. I was so blessed to learn from the small to the big. I get this question so many times. How at the age of 17 you're able to build a chapati kiosi? And how did it come to you even to your mind to, to do it? But one thing which I will share in life, which I've seen in this part of the world, is that even the opportunity we still have here, there's an opportunity to monopolize things. There's an opportunity to have multiple. And there's an opportunity to diversify into so many opportunities. But in one opportunity, which I started the Chapati Kiosk, I'm so blessed that I was able to build like around 13 Kiosk. But not all of them that I would tell you they were successful. That would be a lie. But the ones which... I did and were successful. I think they succeeded on one of the biggest principles is to share opportunities. Because when I set up my Chapati Kiosk was that hold it for a year and then someone takes it over. So it was a partnership. In this part of the world, there is a big fight in partnerships. People do not agree with the man's agreement. Like sit down, we agree together. If something succeeds, someone changes. No, now it's two years. Instead, <laughs> it was one year. But the one opportunity which I thank God here in Uganda, we need to continue developing is partnership. People want to feel a sense of ownership. And that brings me back to the same thing. Like, if you come and work for this great organization here, and your vision and mission is not aligned with this place, you don't feel a sense of ownership. But even if today I commit to you and I say, okay, you give me 2,000 shillings every day, but after one year, you keep the kiosk. Person worked with a spirit of ownership. They worked that this is mine. And that helps on expansion. Because now you can multiply yourself. Because growth is about multiplication. If you don't multiply yourself, you cannot grow. Me and my wife were so blessed to be owning a healthcare company. We employ more than uh, how many people? Around like what? Hundred something? Yeah, no, hundred something. Hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was around like a hundred uh, thirty something. Most of them are people who are coming from this part of the world: Ugandans, Congolese, Africa, all over Africa, and some uh, white people. So we, all, we have from nurses, uh, physical therapists, occupational therapists, uh, CNAs, LPNs. But so many of our friends ask us, how are you in Uganda now? How have you been able to now to leave a business which is big like that and you come and be in Uganda for months? Because the first thing we did, everyone who works next to us, they have to feel a sense of ownership. And ownership gives people a responsibility of leadership. If I'm given a project, 
let me say this office i'm given a project okay you're going to manage these files even before i go to before i go to my boss if a problem comes up i'll write a solution i don't approach them before i have a solution because that's what builds me to become a leader that the responsibility being given to me i take it on not as an employee i take it on as a leader and that's how you start seeing growth of becoming a leader. And even the people who are leading you, they start seeing that you have an impact which matches with the vision and which matches for you to see growth for you to moving forward as an individual. So we have opened up other, we are opening up other branches whereby the same people who we work with in our offices who are like caregivers, who are like uh, just nurses, now we are giving them locations because they have developed themselves from not being like employees. They've developed themselves like to be leaders. That when they have a task, they lead on that task, they find a solution for the task, and they execute on the task. In life, whatever opportunity we are given, the moment we feel a sense of ownership, we'll be able to do what? To achieve what we need to achieve is the same way when you're helping someone to get for them a job or you're working on a job you accomplish or you grow as a person because so many people will come here for you to to help them to get a job or to find for them a place but you receive a better response from them if they are ready with the mission of them understand now they have given me ownership to go do this if they don't feel that sense of ownership that you have given them an opportunity to go lead on to that task, an opportunity you've got them. Let me say you may get from a job in a good place. And for you, you feel like it's a good place. But me, my mindset is not yet there to be as a leader and to own to the presence. I will not be able to achieve that. In life, we should not procrastinate. And that has been my great achievement of life. We were in Dubai recently and uh, we, it was a group, group of people and uh, I saw a machine. It's uh, like, uh, it makes orange juice. Like they just come and fill in orange juice, uh, orange, oranges and it, then it makes orange juice. And I was t telling him, oh, I need to do, I was telling him, ha, I'm going to do it. And Edwin was listening and he was like, okay. And Edwin, I told Edwin, I already contacted a company in China to do to make for me these machines, I need to put them all over Kampala. And he's like, you guy, you move so quick. <laughs> because if you procrastinate that dream, it will be gone. I saw an opportunity, I took a picture of something, and I, I told someone, can we find a company in China which can make for us this? And that's how you don't lose your dream. We always have a saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Procrastination kills our dreams, steals our dreams. That's why they say the grave is the most expensive place on planet Earth. In any opportunity, in any task which is given to anyone in this part of the world, or anywhere which where we are, procrastination takes a lot of our opportunities. Like today, I gave a simple example. Like you see this building which we sit over us to enjoy working from. There's so many opportunities which you can find. But today someone will say, eh. that gentleman over there said about like, okay, we should find the network and presence from the people who are in this building. I'll do it tomorrow. Then your opportunity is gone. Because tomorrow, do you know what is going to happen? You're going to find like, okay, your sister calls you. Oh, you know what? First come and see me. Oh, do this and this. But if you say, no, no matter what, let me give it a shot today. The moment you start, it's like a machine, it just continues. So if you have an opportunity, don't procrastinate. Run with it right away. You start today, chase it. Whatever it takes you, you, you just follow your principles. So I remember when, when we started our business, I used to work at the bank. I was uh, doing banking, helping people to open up accounts and all that. My wife, by then, she was a manager at uh, one of the oldest uh, v and it's an uh, investing nurse uh, company. But we, we, she, we, me and her, we are like, okay, 
we need to start this, we need to start this. We did our planning and all that and all that. Then I'm at the bank, she calls me. It was lunchtime, we always used to call, to, to call each other. She calls me, you say, I quit. I'm like, what are you talking about? You quit? <laughs> you quit on what? <laughs> but then she's quitting a job which I think she was making around like a hundred thousand US dollars by then. And she was like, I'm quitting. And I'm like, does she know that people live on this and you're quitting? So it, it took a lot of time. And what she was quitting for, we had not even got any client, not having structures. We you just had it on a piece of paper and she's like, I'm quitting. So, and she told me one thing, when we wait, we'll not be able to start. So I thank her for that opportunity and always like I refer that to this thing of procrastination. We are so blessed because we didn't procrastinate on that opportunity. And that opportunity has opened for us so many doors. We have saved a lot of lives. We have taken care of so many people. And I'm really so grateful for that opportunity for her non-procrastinating. And through her non-procrastinating has opened for us a lot of doors, a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot of great connections. For just one chance of not being procrastinating on her saying like, I'm quitting and I'm starting this business. So I'm thankful to God for that. So there's so much I can share, but uh, we're just next door to each other. And you can come anytime over and we can share our minds together. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. <laughs>